The elections to the Fourth Duma are approaching, and the enemies of the movement for emancipation are mobilizing their forces. Before us are, first of all, the counter-revolutionary parties, the extreme rights, the nationalists, the octobrists, all in one way or another support the government. What can they count on in the forthcoming election campaign? Not on the sympathy of broad strata of the population, of course. The parties which have bound their fate with the fate of the Lena Massacre government cannot count on the sympathy of the masses. Their only hope is the government's orders, and, as usual, of orders there will be no lack. The Ministry of the Interior has already issued a circular to the provincial governors recommending the adoption of measures to ensure the election of delegates from the Velosts who are fully reliable and do not belong to the lefts. What all these measures amount to we know from practical experience the erasure of left candidates from the lists, the framing up of charges against them, their arrest and deportation, such are the measures. On the other hand, the Holy Synod is advising bishops to take a most active part in the forthcoming elections, to secure the election to the Duma of staunch champions of the interests of the Church, and with that object in view to convene election congresses of the clergy in their respective sees, to proceed to publish special election newspapers, etc., the affairs of the governmental parties must be in a very bad way indeed if even the fathers of the church are obliged to neglect church affairs for the sake of mundane affairs. Elections under the pressure of the provincial governors, spiritual and temporal, these consequently are the measures upon which they can count. True, there is one other method they can resort to, namely, to put on the non-party label, hoodwink the electors that way, get into the Duma somehow, and then throw off the mask. That is precisely the idea of the Kovno nationalists who came out under the non-party mask the other day. But that method is a subtle one and will scarcely suit our clumsy diehards. It is different with the Russian liberals, the cadets, the peaceful renovators, and the progressives. That crowd is more agile and, perhaps, will be able to make the utmost use of the non-party label. And the cadets, whose coloring has faded, need this non-party label needed in the extreme. The point is that during the period in which the Third Duma was functioning, the man in the street learned to look with a critical eye upon the Octoberists and cadets. On the other hand, the first Curia people, the big urban bourgeoisie, are disappointed with the Octoberists, who failed to justify their hopes. Consequently, an opportunity occurs to knock out of the saddle the Octoberists, the cadets' competitors in ministerial anterooms. But how can a bridge to the first curia be erected if not through the progressive peaceful renovators? Therefore, long live the alliance with the peaceful renovators. True, it is necessary to go just a little bit to the right for this, but that does not matter. Why not go to the right if it is so profitable? And so, dress by the right. On the other hand, the small and medium urban people of the second curia, the intellectuals, shop assistants, and others, have swung considerably to the left, especially in connection with the developing Lena events. The cadets are conscious of having committed grave political sins, they have tried too often to betray the cause of the popular freedom, and, God knows, they would even now gladly rush into the ministerial anterooms if only they were sure that they would be admitted. But it is precisely for this reason that the urban democratic strata are beginning to look askance at the cadets. Is it necessary to say also that to come before such voters without a mask, to expose their true features as liberal traitors, is somewhat dangerous? But what, under these circumstances, can be invented for the leftward-swinging urban people, who are already deserting the cadets, but have not yet come over to the social democrats? Of course, progressive fog. Pardon me, I mean progressive non-partyism. Oh, don't think that the progressives are cadets. No, they are not cadets at all. They will only vote for the cadet candidates. They are only the non-party servants of the cadets. And the cadets advertise the non-party progressives. What else can they do? They must swing to the left, at least in words, in the direction of non-partyism. And so, dress by the left. On the one hand, on the other hand, to the right, to the left. Such is the policy of the party of the liberal deception of the people, the cadet party. Hoodwinking the voters, such are the means the Russian liberals will count on. And, this must be emphasized, non-party charlatanry may play an important role in the elections. 
It may play an important role if the Social Democrats fail to tear the masks off the liberal gentry, if they fail to conduct a vigorous campaign in connection with the forthcoming elections, if they fail to exercise all the strength at their command to rally the urban democratic strata around the leader of the movement for emancipation, around the Russian proletariat, 